let's save a little bit more money today. If you're on a bit of a budget, you want to own an iconic smelling fragrance, but you don't want to spend uh, $120 or, or more for that fragrance, uh, you can get a, a version that is similar for about 20 bucks. From Armoff, this is gonna be Tag Him, Poor Ohm. Yeah, usually about $20 for a 100 ml bottle just like this one, and uh, you will get a product that smells pretty close, surprisingly close, to Blue de Chanel. Of course, we all know Blue de Chanel. Now, more specifically here, um, Tag Him is gonna be closest to the Eau de Toilette, in my opinion. Uh, the Eau de Parfum of Blue de Chanel, a little bit richer, that sort of thing, you guys know what it smells like. And then, of course, the Parfum, even further away. So, Tag Him, more so like Blue de Chanel, Eau de Toilette, and we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna go over how this smells, how it performs, when you can wear it, if I think you should pick it up, and, and all of that good stuff, as per usual. And I will drop a link to this one down below so you can get it for about that price I mentioned. Again, here in the US anyway, around $20 or so. Very nice buy. So, I do wanna to touch on one thing with the presentation real quick, one thing, and uh, then we'll get into it. That's gonna be magnetic cap, okay? In Chanel fashion, or blue to Chanel fashion, I should say, it's got a magnetic cap. I thought that was pretty cool to point out. Now it's not gonna have quite the uh, strength and power as Blue de Chanel does or something like Sauvage does in terms of the uh, you know authority that it, it brings the cap down into place, but still a magnetic cap on a $20 clone. That's pretty neat. So let's start off with how this one smells. Now when you first spray it on initially, whether that be up in the air, on a test strip, or of course on your skin, you get that Blue de Chanel feeling or kind of similar vibe right away. I've talked about this a lot of times, but if you have to spray something and then kind of think about what it reminds you of, if you're familiar with that scent, then it's not that close of a clone. It's not always a bad thing, but if you're looking for accuracy, you wanna be able to identify it right away. And as soon as I sprayed this one, I knew what they were trying to do here. So that's pretty cool. You get that grapefruit, ginger, uh, iconic opening um, that you get in Blue de Chanel, you get that here. Um, now with uh, Tag Him, they don't list off incense, but you do still kind of get uh, that slight smokiness, especially off the top. You know, they're using other notes here to achieve that. Probably like the vetiver, um, ginger combination, maybe with some cedar wood to kind of give off a dry woodiness, but I digress. You still do get that signature Blue de Chanel opening, especially with that grapefruit. Now to that point, is it uh, anywhere near as good of quality as Blue de Chanel off the top or throughout? Uh, no, it's not gonna get close to the Chanel but it's one of those weird instances where I own a lot of $20 fragrances, I own a lot of $30, $35 fragrances for that matter, and I've found throughout the entirety of me testing this one, it's been impressive in terms of its quality. Like, uh, it's been better than a lot of other fragrances in this price range is basically what I'm trying to say. It's not gonna compete with Chanel or Dior or Armani or any huge designer brands, but it really holds its own in this cheap category. We'll take a look at the full note breakdown here. We've got grapefruit, lemon, pink pepper, and bergamot up top. Um, and so that pink pepper will also kind of give off that uh, kind of spiciness with the grapefruit, that sort of thing. In the mid, we have ginger, mint, nutmeg, lavender, so the nutmeg as well will kind of do that. Uh, in the base, we have vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, and cedarwood. So a really nice, healthy note breakdown, very attractive note breakdown, at least for me. I like a decent amount of woods, mixing with some spices, even one being a warm spice, and then of course, uh, citrus, right? Really nice combination. Now as it dries down, I find that it will start to kind of move away from the Blue de Chanel smell a little. Now it still smells very similar, but I find for me the opening is kind of the closest part, believe it or not. Um, again, right off that initial first spray, like it's, it's by far in its prime right there in terms of how similar it is to me. Um, as it dries down, you start to kind of pick up on some differences, mainly being that it does flatten out, so to speak. I mean, Blue de Chanel, all concentrations are, are, in my opinion, really, really good. And this is coming from someone with tons of fragrances, right? It may be boring to a lot of people, but I've always been kind of fascinated with Blue de Chanel. I think it, it's an amazing scent, again, all concentrations. But even just talking about the EDT, it still maintains this kind of depth and almost mysterious, mysterious type of smell and this richness as well. 
even as you get past the opening and you start working into the mid and then further on into the dry down, it maintains that. But of course, given the price point that this Armoff falls into and the fact that we are talking about a cheapy clone here, you'll see it start to walk off that a little bit. Still maintaining its own, holding its own here and, and doing a good job of staying similar, but that's where you will be able to tell the difference. And this is definitely one where if you were to smell it blindfolded up against Blue de Chanel, I think most people will be able to tell which one is which, right? So we're not looking at exact one-to-one -one clones here as we get further on, but still more closer than not. I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't want people to feel misleaded. Um, you know, there's gonna be some differences that you'll be able to notice, especially if you are someone who's very familiar with Blue de Chanel and you've worn it a lot or you've smelled it a lot. People in the general public, they're probably not gonna know the difference. You get a little bit of that uh, kind of green mintiness here in the mid, which is nice. It kind of freshens it up. I do find this one to overall be just maybe a slight bit fresher than Blue de Chanel. You know, we're not getting kind of that incense and all that stuff going on as prominent in Blue de Chanel. And of course, in the Eau de Parfum version of Blue de Chanel, um, it's a little bit more pronounced and then even further down the road, the Parfum. That's why I say that uh, tag him here is closest to the EDT. And to that point, Tag Him is also an Eau de Toilette concentration. We'll kind of move into performance here. Um, longevity on me has been around, on average, six, six and a half hours, somewhere around in there. Um, so by today's standards, that's not really super good. Uh, we're so used to and we're so spoiled with, um, you know, eight, 10, 12 plus hour fragrances. I mean, take a look at something like YSLY Eau de Parfum kind of somewhat in this genre and just performs like crazy. It's easy to get hooked on that stuff and expect that out of everything. Um, and for what it's worth as well, Blue de Chanel has never really been a huge performer either. Now, in terms of the Eau de Toilette, this is probably about on par with Blue de Chanel EDT. Uh, with that six, six and a half hours. Uh, the EDT has never really been a super strong performer. I get better performance out of the EDP, usually around seven, seven and a half. And the Parfum, I'll usually get around eight. Um, so, you know, definitely does do better as you move up in concentration. So Tag Him is, for me, on my skin, kind of on par with Blue de Chanel EDT. I also find projection to be on the lighter side as well. Uh, if you want to get strong projection out of this one, you're gonna need to go relatively heavy. One or two sprays, it probably isn't gonna cut it for most of you in the projection department. So don't be afraid to really soak yourself in this one. And again, at this price point, I think most of you guys will not have a problem with doing that. You might cringe a little bit if you're having to overspray Blue de Chanel after you just dropped a you know over a hundred dollars on. I don't even know what the EDT retails for anymore. Not as expensive as the EDT or the parfum, but you're still paying a premium, right? And it's gonna hurt a little bit. When you're paying 20 bucks for this, you can just shower in this stuff and you're gonna smell great. You're gonna get more projection out of it and that's what people are gonna be after. And you're still gonna be saving a lot of money. So again, by today's standards, performance is nothing to write home about, but at the same time, um, for the price, for the quality and everything else that it's worth here, I, I can't really nag on it too much. I really can't. There are also, at least to my knowledge, there aren't too many Blue de Chanel clones out there, uh, at least that I've gotten my nose on. So the fact that this is one that is relatively popular and it seems to do well for itself, I think a lot of people can kind of look past that just okay performance. And this should go without saying, but compliment factor is gonna be amazing on this one. That's Blue de Chanel DNA for you. That's why that DNA has spawned so many blue fragrances because it works. So if you are after compliments, then you are in the right place here. But do remember, you're gonna to wanna to apply it relatively heavily. You're not gonna get compliments if people can't smell you, right? It's something we can all understand. So uh, yeah, don't be afraid, hit yourself with a few extra if your goal is to get noticed. Um, if you don't care as much and just wanna smell good for yourself, you can go more moderate with your sprays and you'll probably still catch a compliment here or there if people happen to get close enough to you to smell it. Um, but as long as people can smell it, you will get positive feedback. I don't care if the DNA is overdone and everyone wears it and it's been around for so long, Blue de Chanel and things that smell similar to it will always get compliments. That's just how it is. So that's kind of uh, just my summary on this one. Not too much else to say here. Uh, if you like the Blue de Chanel DNA and you want like a cheap beater, you know, maybe you're gonna be running out just for a couple hours and uh, then you're gonna be back home. You can just throw this one on and uh, 
get that blue to Chanel feeling without having to use sprays out of your real bottle, which costed you more money, especially if you're only gonna be out for a couple hours and you're gonna be back at home. It's a great grocery getter fragrance, great something to run a couple quick errands and smell great for uh, you know about six hours or so. Uh, just something nice to throw on if you just need something real quick and cheap. So again, I will link this one down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.